Over the last few years, running shoes, or trainers as they're known in the UK, have gotten more and more expensive, to the point where some models like the Alphafly Next% Percent from Nike sell for £269. It does beg the question as to how much profit Nike and Adidas and other manufacturers are making out of these combinations of foam and rubber. Ed Bud here, welcome back to the channel guys. If you've yet to do so, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch the new videos for you. You can also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. I love running shoes guys, don't get me wrong, but the prices are starting to get out of control. With the Alphafly model topping out over £269, it's just crazy. Where's it all going? Just how much money are some of these manufacturers making out of these shoes. Surely they can't cost anywhere near that much to make. Yes, some of these running shoes do seem to have a performance enhancing capability. Maybe the Vaporfly models between four to 5% perhaps, but I think we can all agree that the running shoe does not make the runner. We still have to put in the hard work to get there. But what do these shoes really cost to actually produce? And are they ridiculously overpriced? Okay, first let's consider a shoe around the $100 mark. Sneakerfactory.net I reckon a shoe of this value costs around $11 in terms of upper and midsole materials. So that could be from foam to laces, the actual fabrics that make up the upper of the shoe. $6 for the outsole rubber, $3 for the labor costs to actually put all this together, $2 for packaging, and a few bucks for the actual tooling to create the shoe and cut the pieces out, kind of mold them all together. So we're looking around about $25 to produce a shoe that sells for $100. Let's find some more examples. Soul Review posted some examples a while back showing various costings for running shoes. Yes, these are older models, but I think we all kind of understand where they're coming from here. We have the Pegasus 33 from Nike, so that was a $110 shoe, and they reckon that cost around $23 to produce. We've got the Boston 5. We all know that shoe, right? that took 29 to produce. The Asics Gel Nimbus 18, I think we're on the 24 now, so it's a little way off. That was about 150 at retail, but cost Asics 33 to produce. So you can see here a bit of a disconnect. It appears that Nike are managing to produce these shoes a little bit cheaper. That's all very well producing the shoe, but you've got to get it somewhere to be able to sell it, haven't you? So there are other costs involved that we do have to consider. I mean, otherwise these companies would be making money hand over foot. So these factory costs only show us the actual price to create the shoe and manufacture it. Got to get them somewhere to actually sell them. You've got to be able to distribute the products. The landed cost will add on some cash. Shipping, insurance and customs could add on as much as about $5. Things can go wrong, I suppose, at sea. You could lose some crates into the ocean. I'm pretty sure that that did occur a couple of years back. I think it was ASICS actually lost loads and loads of stuff out to sea somewhere. When the shoe actually gets to the intended distributed destination, you've then got custom taxes to worry about. So various different shoes have different import costs. I know that some manufacturers get around that by suggesting that the shoe is a slipper. Not sure you can really do that if you've got continental rubber on the bottom of your shoe. It's gonna probably make the slipper a little bit too durable. Although the weight of some running shoes now, you've gotta be honest, they are kind of like slippers. Now, the next bit is what perplexes me here, where I started to dig into lots of secondary sources. Everything is aimed here, all the videos, the reports, the white papers, about the selling of the shoe from the manufacturer to retail outlets. Now, that's becoming less and less of a thing now, right? Nike have shut down lots and lots of their retail outlets. Adidas have done the same. They're all spending more time and focusing on their online sales, direct to customer sales. You know, years back, people went to a retailer like Foot Locker or something, and that's where they would buy their shoes. That's drastically changed now. Personally, I can't remember the last time I bought a pair of shoes in a store. Especially where I live, there really aren't that many around at all. I've got to drive maybe an hour or so to get somewhere to buy a pair of shoes in store. Unless I want to go to Sports Direct, but that's just not happening. Many of the reports I read suggest that for a $100 shoe, that Nike would sell that to the retailer 
for $50. So the retailer can then make a bit of a small margin on top of that. I think that's an old model though. Nike are now looking direct to the customer. You can see here from Statista's images that the Nike net e-commerce sales have risen hugely. I mean, that's over double increase, right? That has to be taken into account here. Less bricks and mortar stores and more direct from Nike purchases. There's numerous references to these increases as well from Nike themselves. The revenue increase has been ginormous from their e-commerce sales. Let's remember that Nike sell more shoes than apparel. They're not like Adidas who sell a lot of clothing as well. I think that shoes are predominantly Nike's main focus. I think we need to discount that retailer thing. Nike just aren't doing that as much now. And very recently, we've seen them pull out of Foot Locker completely with Adidas taking their place. I'm sure that Phil Knight is really enjoying that, considering that he used to really despise Adidas, how they had a sort of stranglehold really on the whole shoe game. I think that retailer part is the red herring now and we have to discount it. So if we're not selling the shoe on there, it's basically taking us about $25 to manufacture it and then we can sort of ship it to ourselves as it were to a warehouse somewhere perhaps in europe or over to america and then distribute the shoes from there we're cutting out the middleman as it were nike spent 3.1 billion dollars on marketing in 2021 that could be anything though not just shoe products they've got loads of other stuff that they want to market and advertise surely the overheads are lower from having the shoes stored in a warehouse somewhere and selling a pair of Pegasus 39's direct to a customer. Is that not gonna leave a little bit more money for marketing? I think it was back in 2020, it was reported Nike closed 5% of their retail outlets. Why bother missing out on potential profit selling your shoes that you've just manufactured to another retailer when you can do it yourself? Even if it's just a $100 pair of shoes, $25 to make it, then sell it to the retailer for 50, that leaves little left after taking into account marketing, taxes, and other expenses. You know, a $5 profit's pretty low, really, on a $100 retail pair of shoes. I think Adidas are probably making even less than that, really, considering the higher production costs. But take away that sale to the retailer, and you're making loads more than you were before. Removing that company in the middle is always going to work. I mean, that's what Vans did when they first appeared on the scene. They were selling shoes directly to the customers custom shoes as well and everything that we've seen over the last couple of years shows that nike is doing that moving away from retailers directly to the customers i mean does nike make loads on a pair of alpha fly next percent so let's not forget they're not selling loads of those like they are the pegasus models if they're only making five dollars off a pair of shoes that retails for a hundred dollars you know they're making somewhere near 13 14 dollars on a pair of alpha fly next percent does that shoe even cost that much more to manufacture? You know, effectively the components are similar. You know, is the shoe gonna cost 2.7 times the amount to actually make in the first place? I'd suggest it probably doesn't. Now you could say that more research goes into producing the Alpha Fly. Well, we'll never really know, will we? But in terms of the shoe being 2.7 times the cost of a $100 shoe, I mean, you could say the Pegasus model is kind of around that point, isn't it? Is it really 2.7 times the shoe? And the answer is no. So hand over fist, I think Nike are making more money now than they ever were. Less retail and bricks and mortar stores. Certainly they're making a fair bit on those very high end models, but they're probably not selling quite as many of those as they are there more sort of heritage models. I've always thought the disconnect between perhaps the Alpha Fly Next Percent and the Prime X or perhaps the Adios Pro 2 is huge. There's about a 50 pound difference between the Prime X and the Alpha Fly, but is there that much difference in terms of performance? Well, no, there isn't. If Nike are making $5 from a pair of shoes that retails for $100, selling it through a retailer, I'll leave you to decide what they're making if they're selling it directly themselves. What are your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys? Let me know down in the comments. But I don't think you can escape the fact that some of these shoes are ridiculously overpriced. A quick musical interlude for you. I think it was back in 2005 or 2006, I was lucky enough to see a fantastic duo in Southampton. 
They go by the name of the Two Gallants, a fantastic group using just drums, vocals, guitars. The guitar player had a really interesting sort of finger style, playing electric guitar, a very sort of bluesy, bluegrass kind of style, but vicious vocals and at times some really pounding drums. One of the best tracks was Los Cruces Jail, jangly guitars there and a really spiritful vocal performance. It was around about that time where duos were a really big thing, you had the white stripes and all that type of stuff, but I remember the two gallants creating such a big sound despite just having drums and guitars. I think they've still released some stuff up to about 2015 but it was quite sporadic definitely worth checking out though if you've never heard of these guys before the two gallants a good album to check out is what the toll tells thanks for tuning in guys it's always appreciated hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you